Hey, all right. So today we're going to take a look at expression. Um, you get to it the same way that you would get to Chiron Lucy inside of ENPS. Uh, the main difference is you click where it says expression and not uh, Chiron Lucy. So once you open it up, you will, if it's the first time opening it up, you will probably see a big gray screen if you need to load your project. Most all of our template stuff can be found in CBS1. Um, or if you want, like, say, election graphics, you'd come down here and click your local election headquarters, Y-L-E-H-2, uh, and then click it there and say OK. And now you will see our lovely election graphics. Um, but let's just work in our normal news graphics today. The other stuff in here is final score slash touchdown Friday on the positive side. And um, I might have some custom stuff. Uh, maybe in a little bit, but right now it's just those main folders. So these will group by type. So all of these lower thirds uh, are on a single line. We have OTSs. We have two rows of full screens, and then we have some box type graphics, and then we have monitor fills. So let's start at the top and go down. The first thing we have up here is a FX Stinger drop. What is that? You might notice, well, you don't see stingers. You don't see um, FXs. You don't see any of that. Technically, there's a stinger here, um, but you don't see any opens, anything like that. Well, if you look on these tabs over here on the side, you'll notice we have one called Clips tab. And if we scroll through here, you can see these our pre-rendered clips, all of our opens, some sort of transition-y sort of stuff. Um, so on our graphics tab, if we open this template by double-clicking it, you'll see that it says drop clip here. It says none. And um, I, the best and easiest and quickest way to get your uh, video added here would be to go to clips find what you want, FXCW. Sounds good. So we're going to go to the Edit tab and drag it and drop it right there. So now it says FXCW. Um, it says pause or no pause. Do not worry about that for now. I'll probably hide this feature. Um, the default is no pause, and that is correct. That's what you want is no pause. Um, maybe one day we might incorporate that, but that's more for directors and less on producers. So um, do not worry about that for now. So once we've dropped our FXCW clip here, then I can go over down to the bottom and click the Add to Story button. Or if I really want to get fancy, I can click this preview and drag it and drop it into my ENPS script. Um, whichever you prefer, Add to Story, drag it and drop it. It does the same thing. Um, so. If I go back to my graphic template, I can now choose a different graphic. Um, let's take a look at a lower third. Lower thirds are pretty straightforward. Um, they will update in real time. So new L3. Um, and we're going to take out this line two because I don't need it. And you'll see that it dynamically changes to um, one of the headline style lower thirds, a single line. Uh, and if I take that tab text out, it goes away. So there you go. There's your nice new L3. What's very nice is I can right click and save this as a PNG, which will keep the transparency the same and it'll be the full frame HD. So if an editor needed to add a lower third for some reason or any graphic really, same thing goes for mugshots all of our graphics, I believe, except for the uh, pre-rendered videos, you'll be able to right click and save the graphic to your desktop or on the GVG drive so someone else can use it for their story. Uh, and this is especially useful for quotes and such. So um, back on the graphics page, a lot of these templates are dynamic. So if I, anytime I don't save or add something to a story, it's going to ask me if I want to uh, change it and that's fine. We can do that. So this right here um, I can make this a left or a right uh, Basically anchor one or anchor two 
Um, I can go in and change the titles. I can tell it to be a square or a vertical. And um, basically, it just changes the cropping on the image. So one cool thing is you can come in here and if you want to do a square image, you can click right here in the material space and it will bring you to a program called Streamline. So let's delve into that now. Now that Streamline is up and running, I'm going to put my um, credentials into this and it will open up and take me to Nextstar's Streamline. Here you go. So now that we're up on Streamline, I see that uh, we have uh, some pre-installed Nextstar graphics and uh, some election headshots. They're stuff from 2020. Uh, they've been using this for quite a while, and uh, you know, there's some Olympic flags, uh, some sports logos. Um, we could see stuff for some uh, some regional, uh, smaller sport uh, sports, uh, and so you can use this uh, pretty easily. Uh, there's also some election stuff. There's not a lot of stuff in that folder right now. Um, so we're not super concerned with what Nextstar provides. Um, if we go to stations and click WNCT, now we can see all of the things that we have in our system um, that we can uh, utilize. So for start, we only have two graphics right now. Um, we have some fireworks and a shooting investigation, um, but we also have a maps folder and a mugshots folder. Um, so whenever we want to go and add new graphics to Streamline, um, we will find the folder that we want to add them to. So I want to do some full screen. So I'm going to click upload right here. Uh, the upload on the left hand side doesn't really do much. In fact, we're not utilizing a workflow uh, that does much with these buttons over here. So just know that you need to actually be navigated to the folder where you would like to save things uh, before you try to upload anything. Um, so now that I've navigated to the folder, I want to add a full screen. So I'm going to click Upload. And now I can drag and drop a file in, uh, or I could add a folder or a file through Windows. Um, the way I'm capturing this video right now, you might not see what I'm doing, but just know that I'm trying to navigate quickly to add a few um, add a few pictures in. Okay, so now you should see a few pictures on the list. Uh, right now, I've got a crime scene, a hacking, warning, house fire, poison, a fire truck, uh, Pitt Greenville Airport, and phone scam. So most of these are okay. I'm probably going to need to rename this one because it's name is very convoluted um, but we're going to go ahead and say upload all and mapping profile file storage defaults uh, all of that should be should be fine so we're going to say upload all and it's ingesting you'll notice that it says approve all um, i could remove some of these uh, if i don't like them we don't currently utilize an approve um, function. It's just not something that Nextstar is requiring in Streamline right now, which is probably helpful. Um, but just know that one day it may be that things need to be approved by someone um, before it can be accessed by everyone in the system. But currently, uh, no approvals are needed. So this is uh, since we're uploading many things at once, it's taking its time. We are almost done, and here we go. So everything looks good. So um, we're going to close this now, and we're going to see that these have been added, which is great. Um, I do want to go ahead and change this one, so I'm going to uh, double-click it, and it loads it up. And you see that it gave this string. This is how um, Media General, back in the Media General days, used to send files with very long, complicated 
gobbledygook file names. So we're going to save this as uh, crime scene tape police line do not cross. Uh, and I'm going to do crime scene tape in the top and police line do not cross in the description. Um, so that way, if someone wants to search for this, we are putting as many descriptors in this as possible. Um, whenever you're doing mug shots, put the day's date, person's name, full name, day's date. Don't put bank robber, just call it bank robber, because if anyone ever tries to search for bank robber in the future, that mug shot will always come up and you might be, you know, at a different station at that time and someone's going to say, who's this person and why did they do a bad job naming this? So, and the old system, you couldn't tell who uploaded things, but now you can. So just be aware that we will know if you did it wrong. Um, basically, you just want to put in a very descriptive name. Again, um, maps and mugshots always put a six digit date code. Um, today would be 091322. Um, but again, this is not a map or a mugshot. This is kind of a generic evergreen so we're just going to keep it like that and then i'm going to click save so there we go now i can go back to browse and i notice i don't see anything but if i go to stations wnct i still don't see anything so if i wanted to see everything in the subfolders in the maps full screens and mugshots folder i could click right here to this little binocular icon which lets me look in all the subfolders. So now I see crime scene tape, phone scan, pick Greenville Airport, uh, fire truck association, chemical poisoning, Baltimore house fire, and uh, different things like that. So um, in this pick Greenville Airport, I'm gonna open this up and some people call this PGV. So we're gonna just add PGV to the descriptor. So if, just in case somebody searches PGV, uh, which, if you're searching for airports, it's how, you know, Travelocity, all the booking websites would refer to that airport as PGV. So it would make sense that if this is Pitt Greenville Airport, add maybe PGV to there. Again, you're just trying to save yourself and uh, your fellow producers uh, some time with your naming conventions. So once we have what we need, uh, in this instance, we're going to grab this Pitt Greenville Airport. I can drag this back into my plugin for expression. Literally click and drag it into the box. So I literally clicked it and drug it into the uh, materials face um, little slot here in this template. And you see now it's part of my lovely OTS. One thing that I can do here, I can click and drag and move this around. So I can resize it. I do not need to resize anything inside Access anymore. And I can collectively hear everybody cheering about that, um, which is very nice. Um, just be aware that if it's a small picture, um, you might see what's known as uh, uh, tiling like that which isn't necessarily great uh, I guess you can't really have your cake and eat it too um, but you know the smaller the number the more zoomed in it is and close to one at one it's exactly the right size so just be aware um, if your image isn't the exact right size to fit in the slot maybe you would want to change this to a vertical uh, image and not a uh, square image right here. And again, you can do that all in the same template, which is very nice. So again, I like it. So I'm going to add it to my story. So the other thing that I want to go over just briefly is currently you see down here at the bottom, we have left monitor, right monitor, uh, plasma, and WX monitor. So these graphics allow us to have multiple channels that we were not able to have before that now we can send to uh, a lot of the set monitors. 
and this will be very helpful. Sometimes you may have noticed that um, when you were doing art fill graphics for a right wall and a left wall and the old graphic uh, style with um, ENPS, Lucy, and Chiron graphics, you, you had to basically tell your director which one and where you want it. And you say, I want this in the left, I want this in the right. And when you didn't say that, the director sort of just had to guess what you wanted or at the very least they would give you a call and bug you about it. Well, this is a very definitive left monitor, WX monitor, plasma monitor, and right monitor. And so here, if you drop them in here, you can really help uh, cut down on some of the back and forth and it'll be very definitive about what you won't wear. And it even shows you in preview, it says, you know, this is the right monitor, this is the weather monitor, this is the left monitor. Um, if you have all of that information in the preview, that'll help keep you able to keep an eye on that and, and say, okay, I've got what I want where I need it and I'm, I'm happy with that. So um, let's say, for example, though, that you did have a right monitor and you said, oh man, I wanted it to be in the left monitor. Well, you would go to your script and you would um, click on the one in your script and, you know, hold down shift and then you would um, type that one and it would literally move your object from one to the other. So it would take it from the right wall to the plasma. And then you would say update story or add to story and then you would move on with your life and no one would know that you put it in the wrong monitor briefly and you would uh, help eliminate some confusion when it's time to do your show so um, this is uh, one more function of that i'd like to go over is the boxes Again, we're using these dynamic templates in Lucy and Chiron graphics uh, that we were using in ENPS previously. We had to have multiple different templates. And this way, we now have uh, fewer templates uh, that have more options. So this is four different boxes in one template, which is nice. You see all it's really doing is moving this line and um, where it would have this location. Um, and as we change this, uh, you'll notice that it sort of corresponds and moves along with where it should. And so if you do have a wrong box and say, um, oh, you know, it's someone in the field and two people in the studio or two people in the studio and one person in the field or one person in the studio and one person in the field. It's super easy to go and uh, update your story uh, if something might change on the fly and not have to do a whole new graphic, which should be very helpful. Um, so basically, um, anytime you have a graphic that you like to use a lot, you know that I'm every day I'm going to want one that says, um, Chris is not good at videos, then you could take that and save, click down here to your save, and you could add it to your user favorites folder. So we're gonna come down here and say, um, Chris isn't good at videos. So now I can save it to my uh, user name, uh, or if we wanted to save it in persistent, then everybody would be able to get an access to it. So save it to a specific folder first. Um, daily item is something that will purge out of the system pretty quickly, so it doesn't make sense to save something as a favorite if you want it to purge quickly. So you want to save it to a specific folder, and this is just for me, so I'm gonna save it in my own username. And there we go. So now if I go to the Browse tab, I can go to my user favorites, open that up. And now when I click this, there we go. Chris is not good at videos. So there we go. 
And again, I could right click and export the image and save it and give it to an editor and they could put it in every story that they ever do for the rest of time and everyone will be happy. Uh, except me, because that'll make me feel bad. So if you have any questions, uh, please let me know. Um, there are lots of people at the station who have used expression before and a lot of us who have not. So uh, if you don't get it right away, just know that you are probably not alone, uh, but we're all in it together. Again, thank you for watching. And uh, again, just let me know if you have questions. Thank you.